What's up guys, it's time for another StarCraft Brood of War Remastered Ladder Cast, and we've got MC here in the bottom left hand corner. His opponent, Royal, going on the barcode account. Also, I mean last barcode. It's not last, it's Royal. And uh, MC is, yes, the guy from StarCraft 2 was uh, one of the dominant forces in early StarCraft 2 play. Very heavily reliant on aggressive Protoss tactics like hyper hyper aggression. Um, not well known for being like a super heavy macro player. Much much more uh, interested in just ending you early on and he was actually popular and he was a big player around the time when I was still interested in StarCraft 2 which seems like a really long time ago. And I guess it is quite some time now, uh, like Wings of Liberty days um, was when he was really popular, but he, like a lot of different StarCraft II players, Soul Key included, has eventually uh, turned around and come back to StarCraft Brood War. Most of the StarCraft II pro players were at some point Brood War pros, or at least Brood War like amateur pros in the scene, mixed in there, but switched over to StarCraft 2 because the prize money is just that much better. It's that much, uh, you know, easier to make a living when it comes to being a pro. Um, but I mean, those, those stats are kind of changing here, right? The ability to make money as a StarCraft 2 pro completely relies on your ability to win tournaments. You have to win tournaments or you just won't make any money. And in StarCraft Brood War these days, it's completely possible to do things like play Pro League and play uh, for fun on stream and actually make huge amounts of money. Check my video about Pro League for examples of that. You can make a really decent salary. You can uh, have a lot of fun uh, streaming this game and actually do quite well for yourself. So a lot of players we've seen are coming back to Brood War, MC included. I don't know if we'll see him, you know, make his way deep into any uh, Brood War tournaments or anything like that. I don't know how committed he is at this point to uh, making that happen for himself. You really do have to spend a lot of time practicing your craft if you want to uh, have a shot at that, especially against these pros who have never stopped playing Brood War. But I I'm sure he's capable of it. Maybe he'll bring to us a different style of Starcraft Brood War Protoss that we haven't seen before. I don't know what he has in mind, what type of player he is. I haven't seen too many games from him. I think maybe one or two in total. But he's going up against a very seasoned Terran player here, Royal, who, you know, he came about not that long ago. He wasn't like a Kespa player, I don't think. I might be remembering that incorrectly, but I th I think he's like post Kespa era, uh, pre StarCraft Remastered, but he really became big in StarCraft Remastered in some of the uh, middling seasons. So he has been around for uh, at the top level for about like three, four years now. Guys, again, I'm really bad with my memory. Like I, I can't put all this stuff together. I'm not an artosis or uh, someone with just a legendary memory for Brood War games, like a Shin or whatever. Um, these guys really can just remember all the stats, and it's kind of annoying to me sometimes because I just can't put them together in my head. But Royal has been around for a little while, and he's been very, very active. Really, really strong uh, in the modern era. And uh, I, I actually thought he was going to be the one to take a season of ASL before... JYJ. I didn't think that JYJ was going to take a season before Royal, but uh, we're in this timeline here where Royal is still yet to take an ASL. He's been kind of middling for a little while now at like, you know, round of 16, maybe his best performance level. Uh, we'll see if he can turn that around, but he's going to have to go through MC in the future, potentially in a future ASL. This guy was extremely scary back in the day. And let's take a look at these builds because I've been talking enough about these players here. We've got Robotics Bay. Everything was looking really, really uh, normal and standard, stock standard here. So I wasn't really too worried about 
uh, discussing the games. Just two gateways, Observer. Uh, we should be seeing a third base relatively soon, although the Vulture is out there kind of denying that for now. When the Observer comes out, it will start to spot these mines, and we should be able to take a third base. And here comes that probe. Oh, he does eat the mine. That is unfortunate. You would really like to get rid of that. Um, without eating the the damage there especially with the observer already out and in the front but it is what it is he takes a little bit of damage this push is coming out it's a very standard push here from royal uh he wants to avoid the observer kind of hide the fact that he's going for this i think that you might have just seen the tail end of these vultures but i'm not sure on that he comes into the natural he doesn't see anything this is a nice little tactic a nice little trick here by royal to just kind of obfuscate where his army is and throw his opponent for a little bit of a loop here he's not really sure what's going on he's got an observer out here in the middle you can see he's just trying to figure out like where what where's your where's your army right now it's got to be somewhere right They're coming around okay here it comes but i think that we're gonna have more than enough dragoons to actually deal with this because we were on two gates for so long we went to two gates we just continued to produce dragoons throughout this as long as he targets down mines correctly and goes after the tanks here, he should be able to kill them no problem. Nice kill on that mine. We'll go for that last tank. Very nicely done here. Yeah, perfect hold by MC. Well, he didn't go after that tank in time, but... I mean, he trades out a few Dragoons, but three tanks? Very, very rough for Royal. And yeah, this is a great spot now for MC. MC gonna have to back away a little bit from that wall and allows these vultures to get in two probes three probes gonna go down four probes a fifth probe so this is actually some good damage six seven oh my goodness seven probes just went down there which is a significant portion here of the economy and it's actually dropping MC quite a ways behind his opponent here I I wish he would have just stayed in the wall and let the mines connect or just target the mines themselves while uh, Royal was trying to do that. But uh, he backs away from the mines and lets the vultures in. It turns into a bit of chaos and quite a lot of damage. And that's exactly what Royal was looking for. Well, Royal was probably looking to not lose his tanks early on. But hey, if you end up losing tanks, um, at least he gets that on the backside, right? You'd at least like to get a little bit of harassment damage done. A little bit of pro uh, probe kills to make up for those losses now right now royal is not really able to do any pushing action here he doesn't really have an option to push although he does have five factories it's like we're kind of in a bind right now we've lost too many tanks um we don't have a starport so maybe we still have to push here but we really do need to amp up this tank number so I think MC making the right call and just going for a fourth because we know that he's not going to be able to push for quite some time. Now, checking out inside the main base, if we don't see a starport come down here shortly, it's likely that we're going to see Royal just add on two more factories and try to go a second time. Now, he is going to start to push forward here. I don't think he's going to push all the way out right now. It's only four tanks. All right, nice scan. We'll get the observer as well. A good pick off and you now he can start to shove forward here a little bit make some space for himself but i don't think we're going to see him push just yet are we going to get the star port here are we going to start a cc okay i think this is a cc that's about to pop out we're going to take the cc here go for the third very nice position right over here this wall right there is really, really tough to break through. This is a very nice arced position here from Royal. Like, coming over this and going around here to get on top of these tanks, it's it's tough to break, especially with all these mines here as well. Uh, that's just, This is one of the reasons why this has become more of a Terran-favored map, is because a lot of these ridge lines, these walls here, you can put tanks on this side, you can put tanks here, kind of covers a good portion of this area right in here if you put tanks here it kind of covers a good portion of this area right over here as well and it's hard to get your units on top of that stuff uh, unless you're using shuttles or something like that now let's take a look at the main here from mc going up straight into arbiter he has the fourth base 
He's going to saturate that now, and there's no way for Royal to catch any probes heading over there right now, although he could have easily slipped out some vultures around the top side here. It's unfortunate that he didn't because that probe transfer just made its way all the way across with very little trouble. Oh, did I miss a drop here in the main? I think I might have. We'll have to go back and picture and picture that. A starport does start, but two more factories as well. Um, yeah, he's just gonna just macro from here, I think. The upgrades are gonna be way behind the curve, though. Arbiters are gonna have plenty of time to come out. We should start science facility and another uh, armory as well. There's the other armory. So we're gonna get double upgrades here as soon as that science facility is done. Plus two, plus two will be started. But this gives MC just so much time. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a fifth base right now. He has Arbiters on the way here. And setting up a big wall. Is Royal is making himself safe. But he's also kind of cutting off the ability to move out this direction. So we know that Royal is going to move out from here. We can set up a pretty nice containment on this side. He did slip some vultures through here. But I think it's pretty clear which direction the army is going to come from. Oh, you might be able to slip by and kill this probe. That would be a really nice kill if you can get that. Oh, the uh, vultures did turn around and run away. So, Dragoon's going to hold this position and the Nexus will get started. Vultures up here putting mines. You really think that uh, he's going to take that base right now? I don't think so. Um, MC, not that ballsy. Not willing to go that far, I suppose. Catch this vulture. There it is. Oh, vulture's still alive here. We'll sneak in and kill the probe. Is always nice. Are we gonna go for drops here? No, nope, just going up into um some EMP, which if the EMP lands on the, the first couple of arbiters could be bad for MC here, but I don't think that's likely to happen. We're just getting EMP now. We just got our first science vessel. We should be able to do something with this first Arbiter before EMP comes online. I've got like 15 seconds left, so maybe not. Like he's, he's got the energy to do a stasis. He's waiting for recall. I suppose we will end up having the EMP ready, but there's still a lot of space to cover. You know, we can't have this, this, this science vessel can't be everywhere at the same time. Now, I hope we're not going to see a recall into this area because that would be utterly suicidal at this point. That is so many mines. Look at how tightly packed this base is. Imagine recalling into there. What a nightmare that would be. Probe transfer here to the top left. More Arbiters coming out. In fact, two Stargate Arbiter. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I was going to say to see uh, plus uh, upgrades coming on air as well. You might as well get those upgrades because a late game transition to carriers is always a pretty solid option. Especially when you've already got two Stargates done and ready. You only need to add on the fleet beacon and you can do that kind of whenever. Plenty of money here in the bank right now. Like a lot of money on both sides and both players maxed out. And here comes that push forward. I think we're going to put a stasis on this. Stasis. Now it's time to come in and go for the stasis on the back line, I think. No, he doesn't have enough energy for it. So coming in here to push everything back. But I hope he turns away from this, this attack because these are going to get wrecked. These zealots running in. Ooh, some big mine hits there, but not really killing any tanks. There we go. Finally getting a couple of tanks. This was so many zealots that just went down. And vultures are actually doing a bit of a counterattack right now here in the upper left. Going to force an uh, MC back. Kind of a trade here. Now, he didn't do too, too badly with this. Now coming forward. Hopefully he doesn't take uh, another trade here. Let's have to back away right now. 
keep the rest of that army alive. And it looks like we're all going to get his fourth base. That does seem like an inevitability at this point. Finally going to deal with those vultures. And Observer gets picked off as well. That's a little bit rough. We do need Observers to end up clearing through this. You don't want to just run Zealots into it. Uh, or Dragoons. Because you will get a bad trade. Even worse than you already would in this position. See, plus two is... the is just done so the upgrades are pretty far behind the curve right now we got plus two on the dragoons and zealots and i don't know guys i don't know how this one's gonna go royal of course he's scary he's gonna get oh this cc went down i didn't even realize that that yeah that did fall during that fight which is very rough so losing the fourth cc is gonna float it out now but this is a Pretty late fourth at this point. Um, MC's done a good job of slowing that down with that first attack. I'm going to try and fly in here. Can he get... Okay, just going to get rid of that tank. That's kind of a funny location to throw down a stasis. But that does allow him to freely hit all of these mines um, without taking any damage from the tank there. Science Vessel is out in the front looking for the EMP, but... We have energy for a recall now. Recall is ready. Nothing over here at this base just yet. He's going to relocate that, I guess. Now sending the SCVs over. We don't have a lot of vultures and stuff with this army right now. And we'll be transferring that over to this side to help defend. A lot of forces being mobilized here. And the 200 max army now for Terran has been accomplished. Is it time to push? Are we ready for this? Back at home. A few storms are going to get thrown down, but that's a lot of vultures running by. Oh! I love it. That is such a sneaky play right there. Don't you guys love to see that? I've never, ever in my life seen that. Where the uh, Terran player is trying to run by with vultures, and he used the stasis to keep them from running past. Tell me you're a StarCraft 2 player without telling me you're a StarCraft 2 player. That is some super duper sneaky play. An Arbiter running around the top here, but he kind of allowed Royal to run across the map uh, during that chaos. And, you know, he didn't take a trade in the middle, which he might end up regretting. Wow, that's a lot of tanks. He does throw down. Oh my god, he missed the stasis there. Look at that pack of tanks. In the back line. Well, Zealots are going to try and run up on top of this. Getting on the front line here. Another stasis goes down in the back line. Not bad. He's actually getting on top of all this. And, a, a, yeah, we need a scan. Oh, my God. The scan was very late. He does get the Zealots on top of this. And he should be able to clear it. Um, looks like these Vultures do de-stasis. They thaw out. And so, I mean, those are just going to get cleaned here, it looks like. Yeah, everything just gets cleaned up over there. Finally, an EMP goes down, but kind of whiffs. I don't have, um, have anything over here. Are we going to get a recall or something? I thought I saw a an Arbiter go up north. I think it just got turned around. The attack is still coming through. Oh, my goodness. He actually stasis the science vessels once again. So all the science vessels are in stasis here, but some of these tanks are going to start to to thaw out and once they do he's gonna push forward here once again that's so many tanks now zealots are gonna come down and clear center left and this base is not really a high value one what's really high value is the position here oh my god another great stasis dude these stasis have been insane but is it gonna be enough here is that gonna be enough to help mc carry this game we're very close. They're breaking through here, but maybe there's just not quite enough zealots. Another round of zealots making their way in from the left-hand side. It's going to get on top of a lot of this stuff. Targeting down science vessels at this point would be really, really nice, but he's actually not able to, and dragoons all die. Now, that's quite a few arbiters, but just one EMP. Oh, my God. Another great stasis there. Three science vessels in one single stasis. 
kind of hilarious. Big round of Zealots is coming in from behind this army. He doesn't have the Dragoon numbers to support them, though. Not a lot of Vultures in this army, but just kind of kiting here with the Goliath, making that trade really, really good for Royal. And now coming in another angle here, but not hitting at the same time, unfortunately. So MC is running out of units, but... Uh, hey, look at this. Another round coming in from the other side once again. You know, having the second uh, rally point, it cannot be underestimated how important that is that he's able to come from two different directions here. And the macro from MC is crazy. He manages to push everything back. Finally, an EMP did get thrown down on all of these Arbiters, but we've still got five Arbiters in the air right now. Pretty annoying stuff. I mean, it's going to take them a year to kill even one Goliath. Well, there it goes. It finally does fall. I think it had some help, though. Or they had some help um, in actually taking that out. But look at them trying to hit this siege tank. It's kind of silly. More Arbiters on the way. 12 more Zealots. Four more Dragoons. And, well, Royal's going to take a base over here. He's not really defending it all that well, though, right now. There's seriously nothing over there to keep that alive. And if MC realizes it and sends four Zealots in that direction it'll likely be a dead base wow we're gonna take six o'clock right now and it, he may be able to hold it actually this is the position i was talking about right you can line up along a ridge line like this or along a wall and as long as you can hit the entrance point to the base doesn't really matter where your tanks are the more defended the like the harder they are to get to the better and this is probably the best spot to put them you could put them in here but when they run in, they get on top of the tanks. If you put them here, it's very hard. They have to run through everything and get on top of these tanks. If they run through this way, you're just going to bombard them with so much tank fire. It's going to be very, very tough to break through. And 3k minerals in the bank right now for MC. He's got enough to remax here. No problem. If this goes sour, where are all the Arbiters? Did we lose some of the Arbiters? Okay, some of them are back here right now. Arbiters sitting back at home, just kind of chilling, waiting. Um, ooh, mine connection there. A little bit rough. He does force away the CC here. But Royal has already secured that base at 6 o'clock. He's going to be fine. He's going to be totally okay with that going down. Or with that being pushed away, excuse me. And he will slowly creep forward here. Got to take more area on this map. Here comes the Zealots Dragoon Army. EMP does go down on one of these Arbiters. Second Arbiter, though, has the stasis. He drops it on the tanks in the back line. They are kind of blocking here, but Zealots just en masse blasting through a lot of this stuff. There's not enough Vultures here. Maybe, maybe he can hold on. It's really, really close right now, but it seems like MC will bust his way through. More Vultures come up here, and finally the second rank of Dragoons makes its way to the front. Uh, I think he's got to back off here. I think he's got to back off. He traded a lot of army. And you can see he's remaxing rapidly here. 138 to uh, 176. So, in theory, we should be able to remax faster than Royal and uh, continue to push him back and not allow him to take any more bases. However, Royal is hell-bent on continuing to move forward with his mech pushes. He's spreading out here. He's being a little bit cautious right now, not going for another push over towards that mineral only again, but instead of waiting a little bit back, I think the CC went down again, actually. I didn't see it, but maybe the CC fell. I think it, I think indeed it did. Oh, wow. A lot of science vessels over here. He's really not wanting to get recalled down at the six o'clock, man. He very much so does not want that to allow that to happen. It's a pretty quick little jaunt over here to the six o'clock so i understand the paranoia having four science vessels does seem a little bit excessive though pushing through the middle once again maxed mc i'm gonna try to break through here however more tanks coming up that's quite a solid tank line he will rethink that attack as he's taking this top right hand corner starting to spread to the last main base location here on the map, this top right-hand corner. I don't think that Royal wants to allow that to happen, but what can he do about it right now as he's slowly moving towards another max? Oh, another EMP comes down. 
reducing the energy on these arbiters once again the arbiters very useless at this point flying in is he gonna get a recall on top of these tanks i think he's going for it here we go recall there it is zealots dragoons on top of all of this can he break through with the follow-up attack here looks like we ate an emp on the arbiters after the fact so does not have a second spell right now can he actually get another spell off yeah he does get one more spell but he will be pushed back that's a bit of a rough trade a bit of a rough trade you can see dropping in supply below the Terran player arbiters that are sitting back at home have hardly any energy this is the only one that really has significant energy and I don't know if it's been forgotten about by MC or not it feels like it may have Tanks are pushing out in the middle. This is the opportunity that Royal was waiting for. One botched recall. Whether it be in the main base or on the tanks. Can certainly set you back as a Protoss player. Probes making their way into the top right. Tanks making their way into the top left. We've got that one Arbiter. No, it's still sitting over here. Still kind of forgotten about at the moment. Zealots Dragoons pushing their way over this ramp. He needs to open up a position to ram his Zealot army through. He wants to break this tank push. One lone stasis goes down. Does he have any more stasis available here? I don't think so. He's almost at that energy level, but he's going to pull the trigger before that happens. This is a bit of a rough trade right now, but more Zealots on top of these tanks. We've only got the one stasis, but we will have more soon. Maybe not necessary, though, because he breaks through this tank line once again. Pushing back Royal here. Making a real play for himself. 138 supply and no more bases here for Royal. He only killed one mineral only. And I tell you what, a mineral only? MC does not bat an eye at losing that right now. He just does not care. As long as he kills more tanks, he's going to be fine. Now, losing the top right, he may bat an eye at that. I'll be real with you guys. I think he may be batting his eyes right now. He wants to stop this base from going down, if at all possible. Oh, my God. Why are we sitting here? Why are we rallied to that position, just leaving our Arbiters in that spot? It's so rough. Oh, a missed... EMP there and he's gonna get some great stasis another great stasis there in the back line, but May not maybe not enough right now storms are gonna come out Where are these storms storms? Oh, no the temple are just running in and dying right now Meanwhile an attack in the middle of the map. I guess that's where the attention was uh, Happening here for MC and the base comes up and the position here is such that this base in the top right is likely to go down within moments. One more stasis is available. Can he make it happen? MC bringing all the work, the uh, units that he can to bear right now. He's still forgotten about this Arbiter, which is a real shame. That Arbiter could have helped out a lot if it had been brought forward a little bit earlier. Maybe in the fight like over here, if he'd had that available. Put down a couple more stasis. He would have taken a much better fight. He would have had a lot more left over uh, at the end. So a little bit unfortunate there for MC. He's going to take another EMP as well. So the EMPs are starting to stack up now. To where we can't actually hold on. Against what this Terran player is putting forward. And great EMP on these Templar as well just dealing so much damage coming from behind here trying to run zealots up on top of this but the trades are getting worse and worse and MC is starting to fall apart it's been an incredible game here so far but Royal his experience as a late game Terran player it seems that MC is not ready to handle it he did a reasonable job of holding on as long as he did. But I would have loved to see a carrier transition from him at some point. Even though it is kind of rough on this map. 
not the greatest map for the carrier transition but when you have such a bank when you're taking great trades um sometimes you gotta quit while you're ahead unfortunately he is gonna end up losing this upper right and all he can do about that is just counterattack. he's gonna do his best to run in here get what counterattacking damage he can running forwards here straight into mines a nice pullback with some of these zealots to keep the majority of them alive more stasis are gonna go down stasis on top of the d matrix tank is really really strong not sure if he's gonna go for that kind of negates the effectiveness of the d matrix in the fight but another great stasis here on the top side man this is so much stasis holy crap that is wild but i don't think it's going to be enough everything here kind of evaporates for mc and what do we have left really truly nothing here he never took the 12 o'clock which will spell his defeat gg is called mc taps out in royal taking it home here at the starcraft 2 professional not quite able to stand up to royal our very strong up and coming Terran player. I, I I know I keep saying up and coming, but really I think of these guys as up and comers. Him, Rush, uh, maybe Rush a little bit less, maybe JYJ a little bit less, but Royal um, Speed is one of. I guess uh, you know what I'll put maybe Speed in a different category than Royal, and Royal just gonna stay in the game a little bit longer to uh, finish off. The final base here. Kind of enjoy his win here over MC. Hey, it might not be like this for much longer. If MC keeps practicing and he puts his heart and soul into the game like he did for StarCraft 2, we might end up seeing MC become a real force to be reckoned with. He played a great game here. I definitely enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.